Welcome to ESMS Primer, an introductory course on environmental and social management systems, or ESMS, developed by the GGF Green Academy for partner financial institutions of the Green for Growth Fund. This course will familiarize you with the potential environmental and social, or ENS, risks facing your portfolio. It will also introduce effective tools you can use to mitigate and manage these risks and enhance the positive impacts of your investments. We hope you find the course useful. Hello, my name is Anna. You will recall that I work as an environmental and social officer in a financial institution. Welcome to this overview of how an ESMS can help financial institutions identify, assess and manage E&S risks in their own operations and business activities. Here's my colleague, Sam, who works as a credit officer. Hi, Anna. So, what is an ESMS and why should a financial institution consider having it? An ESMS allows the financial institution to integrate environmental and social, or E&S, considerations and objectives into its core business activities. It can help the financial institution understand, manage and reduce E&S risks associated with its clients' activities, as well as with its overall portfolio. The ESMS can also help the institution ensure that it complies with all relevant E&S laws, international E&S standards and commitments. For an ESMS to be efficient, it needs commitment from the financial institution's top-level management, as well as supporting policies and procedures, clear distribution of roles and responsibilities, and implementation tools and guidelines for the institution's staff to follow. That all sounds very interesting, but how does the financial institution go about applying an ESMS to its portfolio? This will depend on the type of business activities that are in the institution's portfolio. The ESMS should be proportional to the level of E&S risks associated with the FI's lending or investment activities. For portfolios containing clients or projects with activities that are considered medium or high E&S risk, such as mining, agriculture or construction, a robust ESMS is needed. For a low-risk portfolio, such as loans for mortgages and energy-efficient appliances, the ESMS will be light. The ESMS should be applied in all phases of the institution's credit risk management process and integrated into its day-to-day -day business activities. It should not be a standalone process. It also requires that the financial institution's clients implement mitigation measures for any identified E&S risks. This can significantly reduce the institution's E&S risks as well. So, what are the benefits of having an ESMS? A well-designed ESMS can bring numerous benefits. First of all, it helps the financial institution improve the overall risk profile of its credit portfolio. Secondly, the ESMS can enhance the institution's brand and reputation as a sustainable lender among its clients, borrowers, investors and other stakeholders. It can also help the financial institution comply with the local E&S laws and the E&S standards of international financial institutions who lend to or invest in the institution. For example, the International Finance Corporation, or IFC, and the World Bank. The ESMS can help FIs gain better access to finance from international financiers, such as the IFC and GGF, who look for sustainability considerations in their investments and thereby unlock new business opportunities. The objective of the ESMS should not be to limit or impose significant barriers to deals, but to help appropriately identify and manage E&S risks and create value for the financial institution. It sounds like a lot of effort. How long will it take to develop an ESMS? The time needed to develop an ESMS depends on the size of the institution and the type of investments in its portfolio. Sufficient budget and internal staff resources should be allocated to designing and implementing the ESMS. 
An ESMS working group can be set up which can include the institution's E&S officer and personnel from the Credit, Commercial, Audit and Human Resources departments. An external expert can be hired if necessary. The working group is responsible for determining the E&S standards, type of financing, including loan amounts and clients' business activities that the ESMS will be applied to, as well as developing the E&S procedures and tools. Once developed, the ESMS is presented to the financial institution's management for approval. The ESMS can be adjusted annually to reflect any lessons learned and to ensure it is relevant to the institution's business activities. A well-integrated ESMS can ensure effective management of E&S risks in the financial institution's portfolio, compliance with national regulations and international E&S standards. OK, I get that. So, what are the key elements of an ESMS? Well, you'll have to watch the next video to learn about the key elements of a financial institution's ESMS. You can find the relevant links in the description box of this video.